Alrighty, once again I'm making another video, so I'm uploading three videos in one day. So, what I want to talk about is something I just recently had to redo, which is my own 504 testing. Um, I'm going to sit with the doctor Friday afternoon to go over it, but I found my old testing. The first thing is I want to talk about with those stabilities is the one that everybody sees, my glasses. Now, I don't wear glasses for normal reason. It's not like I have astigmatism or something like that. No, I actually have a visual tracking disorder, which when my eyes get to the end of the sentence, they move back and forth really, really fast, which makes me lose my place, which makes it harder for me to take notes if I'm not wearing my glasses. So that's what it's correcting. So I have to wear them pretty much all the time because for me to look up and down and take notes or read off my notes when I'm teaching, I need them. So, it is a motor dis disorder of the eyes, which causes a difficulty in tracking, which the eye doctor told my parents, um, a lot of times people with learning disabilities like mine have a similar stigmatism, or not stigmatism, disorder. Now, my testing. When you sit for the psychological testing, you have 12 tests you have to take. The first is the clinical interview. The second is the Whistler Adult Intelligence Scale. Then you have the Whistler Individual Achievement, the Wood Cork Johnson Test, Gary Oral Reading Test, the Dyslexia Scale Instructions, the Archie Baum Children's Behavioral Test, which I think that deals with the ADHD, which I didn't take this time around, um, the Connor Perry Rating Scale, the test of variable attention, no that's ADHD, the test of variable attention, Carrie's assessment, uh, Million Adolescent Clinical Interview, and the Rotom, Rotor Incorporate Sense. So, long story short, it takes three days to do, you take all these different tests, and in the end it's going to tell you your IQ. Well, normally, for a normal person's IQ, the gap is maybe one or two points. My IQ, uh, there's a lot more. So my verbal scale, which is oral speaking, is 32. My performance or written is 105. So my verbal is superior, so I'm on the high end, verbally, but when you ask me to write, I drop down to the average end, and if you average the two together, however they average it, it comes out to the 115 range, which is high average. So, what does that mean? It means I'm highly intelligent verbally, and I can explain everything to you orally, but ask me to write it down, it's a hundred times harder for me, which is really, really frustrating. Now, I just retook the dyslexia scream, and one of the questions on there is, are you easily frustrated? Yes. <laughs> are you disorganized? Sometimes. Do you forget people's names? All the time. I will forget people's names every day of the week, and I've had to force myself to remember by repeating their names over and over and again. So, last time I was tested, I was diagnosed with ADHD, reading disorder, mathematics disorder, and a disorder of written expression, aka meaning I have dyslexia. My form of dyslexia is 1 in 1.5 million people. So, it's very rare for me to find somebody like me. And my tricks may not always work for you. But my number one trick for me to ever do something is I have to have it written down on a calendar in like six different places where I know exactly when everything's due, but also to say it aloud a million times. Like when I'm reading a book, I'll read and I'll start reading aloud myself because it makes me retain the information. Um, Audible. I go for bike rides every morning. I ride like eight miles every morning. And right now I am listening to a book, and the book is called, the full name of this book, which is anybody who wants to learn anything about the polio epidemic, I highly suggest this book. Um, it is by, Nothing. no, Polio, an American story, the crusade that mobilized a nation against the 20th century most fearsome disease. For me, listening to the book, I remember it better than me reading it, but when I'm writing a research paper, of course, I have to read the stuff, and yeah, I have to read it aloud. Do I print off a lot of the stuff I read? Um, this is just my teaching notebook, like, this is articles that I've read dealing with 
education, and as you can see, they're kind of colorful. I do print it off. I do print it off. I read on it. I write all over it. Things I like, I write on. Things I don't like. Thinking questions I have. Oh, these are also my lesson plans. Oh, that's where my lesson plans went off to. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is what I do. And I have notebooks all over my house where I'll write things down, like ideas I have for teaching. Because being kind of ADHD, I'm all over the place sometimes. And that's when I come up with some of my greatest ideas for teaching. I don't know why. But when it comes to being dyslexic, the number one trick I can give anybody is find your own way. I can't tell you what the best way is and I can't tell you the best method because I'm different than you. If my method works, that's great and I'll come up with a list of my methods. But you have to find your own way. And once you find that, don't let anybody change it. I went to a college where they tried to change how I did things and it didn't work out for me because it doesn't work when I try and change certain things. There are certain things I can change and other things I can't. That's one thing I could not change. So guys, I'm going to make another video about this. Have a wonderful week. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I'm more than willing to help out. Have a wonderful night. Peace.